Chapter 19 Booths wrapped in leather hid in stalls and smoke. Secret voices buried in a sea of music. Flashing, turning lights that pelted the dancers' swinging hips and spinning shoulders and glanced off the back of them. Missed the sedate recesses of this club in the warehouse district of Chicago, where valeted Porsches and vets waited with eyes retracted behind barbed fences for the fragrant return of two where there had been one. Will pushed the paper box out with a fingernail and saw the wooden tails then back in and out the other side for the aqua sulfur heads. He looked up. There was no ceiling. If there was, it was black and absent. He and Cass left their booth for more drinks and crystal and returned. He guessed that her friend Tony had had her once in his bed, in his arms, once. The booth was not uncomfortable. Her friend spoke of later that night like there was no now. Plans, plans, plans. She kept disappearing with Tony and that little purse of his with the shit that keeps some folks together at any hour and certainly through later that night that lives on to tomorrow in shadows and basements and alleys. Night that always is, until one day you awake in those shadows and basements and alleys, and you're not together, and you wonder how you could have wished the night went on forever, now that you got your wish. Here's to higher highs. He flipped the matchbook over and over in his fingers, flicked the crystal until it rung, wrapped the table with his knuckles isolated in a booth with a woman he no longer wanted and a guy she would no longer have and who he had nothing in common with save an insatiable thirst for her for women too frightening to put himself in this guy's shoes heavy set overweight balding from stress money in a clip that can't buy love and a one-sided affair with that shit in his pouch, bursting in his belt for laughs he had not laughed, drinks he had not drunk, box springs he had not sprung, flavor he would never taste.